My next guest is a former presidential candidate and a current senator from Vermont. Please welcome Bernie Sanders. Thanks so much for being here. I think you're the, the person I'd most want to talk to about this election now that it's over. Um, uh, how are you doing? It's been a tough week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Leave it at that. All right. During the campaign, last time we had you on the show, uh, you were still running for the nomination. And all through the campaign, people used to say to me, oh, you know, Trump's people and, and, and Bernie's people, they're the same people. They're angry about the same things. Um, and you were called, like, you know, the, he was the Republican, you know, Bernie. You were the Democratic Trump. I'm sure you heard all of this. What do you think is the common thread? Because while it's easy to, it's easy to condemn, it is harder to convince uh, or to understand. So, do you think there was some overlap in the anger of your two crowds? Yeah. I mean, above and beyond the incredible bigotry of the Trump campaign, what he did is he tapped into a lot of pain and anxiety and angst that the American people are feeling, which is very rarely reported in the media or understood by the punditry. The fact is there are millions of people in this country right now today whose life expectancy is lower than their parents. They are living in despair. They are turning to alcohol, drugs, and suicide because they see no future for themselves. You got 60-year-old workers today, Stephen, who are facing retirement. Half of those workers, you know how much money they have in the bank facing retirement? They got zero. They don't have a nickel. Think about going into retirement without a penny in the bank, scared to death. You got single moms out there today who are making thirty, forty thousand dollars a year and spend thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars in childcare. How do you survive? You got kids graduating college, fifty thousand dollars in debt, earning twelve dollars an hour. That is the reality of America we do not talk about. I talked about as much as I could. And Trump talked about it. At the end of the campaign, Trump was posing as a hero of the working class of America. Now, I happen not to believe him. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, and I hope, in fact, he does follow through on some of his ideas about creating jobs and raising wages. But to answer your question, I think what the punditry and the establishment does not understand, there are a lot of people in this country who are suffering, who are hurting, who are scared to death about tomorrow for their kids, and he tapped into that anxiety. People are marching in the streets. Are you in favor of that? Yeah, I mean, I think people are expressing their feelings. They're exercising their constitutional rights. What about the uh, not my president? Uh, people saying not well, my president. What's most important is to figure out, you can come up with anything you want, but what we have to figure out is where do we go from here? This is the reality. And what I have been focusing on right now, just several things. I, I, I think, and let's be clear about this election. Hillary Clinton ended up with two million more votes than Donald Trump. So don't... <laughs> You know, so don't see this as a mass, as, you know, a, a, a massive success mm -hmm. for Trump. He lost the popular vote. Second of all, he comes into the White House as the least popular candidate in the history of this country. Please do not think that all of the people who voted for Donald Trump agree with his sentiments about women or African Americans or, or you know, his rejection of the science regarding climate change. They don't. But for a variety of reasons, they did end up voting for them. Our job now is, to, in my view, to figure out how we create an effective opposition. Now, the truth is, Democrats should not be losing to a candidate who insults so many people, who wants to give huge tax breaks to the top two-tenths of 1%, and who rejects climate change. How are we losing these elections? Something is fundamentally wrong. 
And what I'm trying to do right now is to bring about structural changes in the Democratic Party so that it becomes a grassroots party. Well, we've got to take a little break here. I want to talk about more of that when you come back. We'll be right back with Senator Bernie Sanders.